What's up everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be sitting on that couch and answering 10 of the most frequently asked questions that I get about design. Let's go. What's up everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be answering 10 of the most frequently asked questions that I get about design. So these are questions that have come in through email, through Instagram, through my contact form on my website. And I'm basically just gonna go through and do my best to answer these one by one. So let's go. Question one, in general, and also in regards to vintage style graphic tees, is it better to get your design screen printed or DTG? So if you don't already know, DTG means direct to garment. Uh, basically, this is a process that's usually used for one-off t-shirts, uh, print-on-demand type stuff, uh, whereas screen printing is a more involved process, it takes longer. A big difference and a big deciding factor on which way you want to go is generally your budget because um, to do screen printing you have to meet minimums. So if you're only planning on printing, you know, 15, 20 t-shirts, um, most companies aren't even going to be able to screen print those for you because their minimum quantity will be, um, you know, 50, you know, maybe sometimes 100. If you're serious about it, um, you know, if it's a clothing brand or if it's something for your company, I would definitely recommend screen printing um, because overall it's going to be just a higher quality product and it's going to be a better experience for your customer. Question two. Yo, did you have to get permission from the artist estate or something like that to print your tees? So I've actually been asked this question a few times. Um, I don't print any t-shirts. Um, I'm just a designer. I work with merchandising companies who have license agreements with uh, different artists estate or their record labels. Um, and so they have the rights to print t-shirts, to design t-shirts and to sell t-shirts. Basically my job is just to get projects from merchandising companies or record labels and design for these artists that they give me. Question three, I was just wondering how the blacks in the background will look if they were to be printed. So basically it sounds like they're asking, um, you know, your canvas in Photoshop might have a black background and they're wondering if when the screen printer goes to make your t-shirts, if they're gonna print a big black square or rectangle or whatever on your t-shirt. Uh, the answer is no. Basically, think about the background of your Photoshop file as what color the garment is going to be. You know, generally, if I'm gonna design something that's going on a red t-shirt, make the background of the Photoshop file red. If you wanna design something for a black shirt, it's a good idea to make the background of your Photoshop file black so that you get an idea of how everything's going to look once it's printed. If for some reason you get t-shirts and there is a big black rectangle on it, um, I guess I would be very surprised and the screen printing company must be like brain dead. Question four, will there be any free packs in the near future? So this is a good question. Um, I have a few things for free right now. Um, I try to sprinkle them in whenever it makes sense. I'll definitely link below to all the stuff that I have available for free um, at this current time. Um, yeah, in the future, I'll definitely have more stuff. It's just a matter of like figuring out kind of what you guys want and what makes sense and um, you know, what is, I guess, organic in terms of like the video I'm making. I try to have it all make sense. Um, so the answer is yes. Question five, how do you get photos from the internet? Question mark. Is there a way to know if they're copyrighted or are free to use? So if I'm ever going to use some sort of photographic element in my design, I'll go to a website like Pexels. Um, I'll link them below. They're great. Um, stock photography website. They're completely copyright free. You don't have to credit anyone. You don't have to pay for it. It's super awesome. The photos are super high quality and I definitely recommend them. So if you just Google copyright free stock imagery, um, the chances are you're going to find a bunch of websites that will have some really high quality um, photos for you to use. It's definitely important to understand what the restrictions are on any given photo. Um, just because the website says they're copyright free, that might mean they're copyright free to use for personal projects as opposed to commercial projects. Personal would mean like you're making t-shirts for your grandma Betty's 90th birthday and you're giving one to your mom and your sister and you're not selling them to anyone. Commercial would be you're the owner of Cool Guy Apparel and you want to sell this t-shirt with this photo on it for 40 bucks and you got the photo from a copyright free website, um, make sure that it says 
these photos can be used for commercial purposes because you are going to resell it, so you do need that license. When you see me on Google in my tutorials, it's just for the sake of the tutorial. Um, I don't recommend using Google for any images that you intend on putting on t-shirts and selling. Question seven. I wanna start my own clothing brand based on vintage looks and streetwear, but don't want to copy everyone else. I just wanna use vintage fonts to stand out and be unique. Any advice? So I'm gonna read you exactly what I wrote back to this person on Instagram. That's dope, glad the videos have helped you out. Man, in terms of being unique, it's just all about your perspective. That's the cool thing about true streetwear. It's about being an individual and conveying your thoughts. So my best advice is just to create designs that speak to a unique vision. Don't expect it to happen right away. It takes time, but as long as you approach it from a personal place to begin with, you'll be way further ahead than other brands who just mimic whatever is cool. Hope that helps. Just to add on to that, I recently watched this interview with Bobby Hundreds and he was asked a similar question and his answer was pretty cool. It was basically like the closer that the brand ethos or like the motivation behind the brand is to you and like who you are just as a person, the better your brand is going to be. Question eight, how do you print a design with a bunch of different colors? So I actually get this question pretty often um, and I assume it's just because a lot of my tutorials do have full color photos. So it's totally a valid question. Just about any screen printing company can do full color photos. It is going to be the more expensive option versus like a one or two color screen print. Um, but if you are trying to create, you know, t-shirts that have a vintage look and are full color and um, that sort of thing, full color process is your best bet. It's also called CMYK process. I'm not an expert printer and I would never claim to be, but I do have friends who do screen printing for a living. I worked in a merchandising facility that printed t-shirts all day, every day for almost a decade. So I do know some stuff about screen printing. That being said, um, I would suggest just relying on the expertise of whatever company it is that's printing your t-shirts. They're gonna know way more than I do. You can also find plenty of videos about screen printing on YouTube, just do a quick search. But stay on this channel if you wanna learn about designing t-shirts. Question nine, how do I achieve this look? So that actually goes along with question eight. Um, it's just a full color printing process, probably CMYK. Um, again, that's like the only way to get that sort of look out of your t-shirts. Like I mentioned, a little bit more expensive, but totally worth it. Finally, question 10. Hey, can I use your bootleg textiles in Photoshop Elements as well, or does it just work in Photoshop CC? So that's a great question. My honest answer is I don't think so. I've never used Photoshop Elements. I just use Photoshop and that's what I suggest you guys do. You could learn how to ride your bike super fast and that'd be awesome, or you could get your driver's license and a car. So I really think it's gonna be a better use of your time just trying to learn Photoshop as opposed to Photoshop elements. That way you'll be able to use all the presets in these videos and it just has more capability overall. So that's it for today. Hopefully I answered some questions that you guys might have had. Um, you can always hit me up on Instagram if you have other questions, it's fuller.moe. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe now. I drop a new video every single week. Sometimes they're design tutorials showing different styles inside Photoshop. Sometimes it's just general knowledge or giving you insight into what it's like to be a freelance designer in the music industry. But there's plenty of information on this uh, channel, so stick around. I hope everyone is staying safe, staying inside whenever possible. It's really important that you guys do that so we can be done with this crazy uh, pandemic that is basically fucked up everyone's life. Um, so don't do it for yourself, do it for everyone else. That's it for today, peace.